five days into a 25 and a half day Artemis 1 mission, the Orion space capsule continues its trajectory towards the moon. Orion completed its third outbound trajectory correction burn at 612 AM, firing the auxiliary thruster engines for about six seconds at a rate of 3.39 feet per second to accelerate the Orion capsule and adjust the spacecraft's path towards the moon. At 1.09 p.m. November 20th, the spacecraft entered into the lunar sphere of influence, making the moon, instead of Earth, the main gravitational force acting on the spacecraft. There are about 20 days left in the Artemis 1 mission, and the Orion space capsule is continuing to do science along the way. And there are two maneuvers that the spacecraft has to do in order to get into a distant retrograde maneuver around the moon. And the first maneuver will place it about 80 miles above the lunar surface. When the Orion capsule passes behind the moon, NASA loses communication with the capsule. It's going to be there for about 34 minutes, but when it comes back, the Goldstone ground station will be able to acquire the signal and continue communication with the capsule. So we just got some really great news from NASA about the flyby of the Orion spacecraft. This is from Jim Free, and Jim Free basically takes care of everything exploration-based outside of Earth. Flyby complete, NASA Orion completed its closest flyby of the moon this morning, 81 miles above the lunar surface, traveling 5,102 miles per hour. Before the flyby, we conduct an outbound, outbound powered flyby burn, increasing speed at a rate of more than 580 miles per hour. This thing is going really, really fast. And here's the press release from NASA. I want to just take a look at this real quick. And I want to get your opinion on what's going on with the, with the Orion spacecraft. Are you in favor of the Orion spacecraft and the Artemis program? Let me know in the comments below, because I think it's really important to have both the Artemis program and other programs in place for the future of human spaceflight. Now, here we go. This is what I was talking about a little bit before. Orion reacquired signal with NASA's Deep Space Network at 7.59 a.m. Eastern Time, successfully performing the outbound powered flyby burn at 7.44 a.m. Eastern with a fire of orbital maneuver systems engines for 2 minutes and 30 seconds to accelerate the spacecraft at a rate of more than 580 miles per hour. That's a little bit more in-depth than Jim Free because Jim only had that quick tweet, but we have a lot of information here from the Artemis blog on NASA. You can check it out at blog.nasa.com slash Artemis. And at the time of the burn, Orion was 328 miles above the moon, traveling at 5,023 miles per hour. Shortly after the burn, Orion passed 81 miles above the moon, traveling at 5,102 miles per hour at the time of the lunar flyby. Orion was more than 230,000 miles from Earth. The outbound powered maneuver is the first of two maneuvers that the Orion module will do in the lunar orbit. And the second one is the distant retrograde orbit insertion maneuver, which will be happening November 25th. On Friday, this could be using the European service module to do that. NASA is using the Deep Space Network, which is managed by the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Southern California to communicate with the Orion module as it's doing these burns around the moon. And this includes the mission's trajectory cor corrections, powered flyby burns, insertion into and departure from distant retrograde orbit, and the near space network provides supplemental navigational data as they go through these maneuvers. If you could do me a favor real quick, hit the like button and hit the subscribe button because that way YouTube will see that you like space flight content from NASA, SpaceX, etc., and they'll start recommending you more of that kind of content in the future from different creators, not just myself, but other people with, well, you might actually like them better than me. So that's cool. That's a win for you. And I get a little bit out of it too. So thanks so much for helping out. And let's get back to the content. The Orion capsule will stay in the distant retrograde orbit for six days before firing its engines to send it back home to the moon and coming back down off the coast of San Diego in the Pacific Ocean. This mission is going to be 25.5 days altogether from launch to landing. And when this mission is complete, the Orion capsule will splash down off the coast of San Diego in the Pacific Ocean, where the capsule will be retrieved and the data within the capsule will be used for the Artemis II mission. NASA assured us on the 21st of November that everything is fine with the mobile launch pad and everything is going to be a go for the Artemis II mission in about a year from now. 
and the Artemis 2 mission will fly around the moon the same way that the Artemis 1 mission did. And they'll be gathering data from the Artemis 1 mission to use to make the Artemis 2 mission even better. So the launch pad will be ready. The Artemis 2 mission will launch on an SLS rocket with an Orion space capsule on top, just like Artemis 1. And as the Orion crew capsule finishes up its duties in about 20 days from now, we will be gathering data from the capsule for the astronauts that will be inside of the capsule in Artemis 2. So there are some dummies on board of Artemis 1 right now, and they're kind of a placeholder for actual people. They're doing readings for radiation. They're doing readings for movement. We're doing readings for everything that a human can go through on its way from the Earth, from launching on the SLS rocket to around the moon, and also coming back down to Earth. They're going to be going about 25,000 miles per hour on their way back down to the Earth's surface. They're going to be scrubbing some speed off of the Earth's atmosphere. They're going to be skipping off of it and then landing in the ocean at about 15, between 5 and 15 miles per hour when they actually hit the water. So not that bad after coming in at 25,000 miles per hour. And during the Artemis II mission, the astronauts that are inside of the Orion space capsule will be the two people that have been furthest away from the Earth on a lunar mission. And NASA had this to say about the mission as they were doing the flyby. Orion completed the outbound powered flyby at 6.44 a.m., passing about 81 miles above the surface at 6.57 a.m. The spacecraft's speed increased from 2,120 miles per hour before the burn to 5,102 miles per hour after the burn. Now, this is the really, really cool part. The spacecraft passed about 1,400 miles above the Apollo 11 landing site at Tranquility Base at 7.37 a.m. Orion later flew over the Apollo 14 site at about 6,000 miles in altitude and then over the Apollo 12 site at an altitude of about 7,700 miles. They go on to say the mission continues to proceed as we had planned and the ground systems, operation teams, and the Orion spacecraft continue to exceed expectations. And we continue to learn along the way about this new deep space spacecraft, said Mike Serafin, the Artemis One mission manager. This is so cool. I'm so happy that we get to witness this. And please, if you are excited about the Orion mission and about the Artemis missions, make sure to give this video a like because I can make more of these videos the more support I get. If you're into spacecraft and space flight and NASA, please hit the subscribe button. I really do appreciate your support. So thank you so much for watching today, and I'll see you next time.